This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by The Ben Heck Show. Carlos asked us this question. I have three weddings coming up toward the end of the year. I want to purchase an HD camcorder to record set events. It can be a pocket camera, a point and shoot, which requires good HD video, or a regular HD camcorder. I don't care about bells and whistles. I want it to be simple, have good image quality, 1080p recording, preferably to be capable of also capturing 60 frames a second, 1080p 60, huh? And at least decent low light performance, uh, at least decent uh, stereo recorders and speakers. Also an SDHC card slot, and finally image stabilization. I already have a decent Nikon D90, which shoots 720p video, but it doesn't have autofocus. The quality is okay, but I like to have a device which does have autofocus. Signed, Carlos in Rockaway Beach, New York. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, for a while there, there was this big sort of market opportunity for little pocket flip type camcorders. The truth is most cell phones are actually starting to do, or smartphones are doing a better job with video. And given your requirements, just rule out any of the little cheap handheld pocket flip type camcorders. They're easy to use, but there's no image stabilization. The image quality is kind of eh. And when the light gets dim, the image quality is awful. Exactly. Yeah, video DSLRs though, compact system cameras, they can provide some amazing low light video, but they're not particularly user friendly video cameras compared to an actual camcorder because you're dealing with all these cool camera, you know, like I'm a cool guy, camera guy, and I can go through this menu and this lens and it's like, oh, I missed the ring. Things. That would be bad. Yeah. Um, most models that they have kind of limited on-camera audio capability. When you're talking about like using a DSLR, the audio capability actually often is atrocious. And depending on the uh, camera and lens combination, you can get image stabilization might not work as well as you would like. And seriously, sound like people never think like the sound is incredible. But if you can't hear all the important stuff going on at the front, you're basically just just take still pictures, right? Or, or consider adding an audio soundtrack and just get rid of the <laughs> awful noise that's there. <laughs> Sorry, I've been visiting, uh, yeah. I do use my there. camera's re video recorder function, though, right. because it's built in and it does have the 1080p60 function. Mm -hmm. However, it's a pretty expensive setup I'm rolling around with, so that's not something I would want to take to most sporting events. That's something right. where I'm being a little more careful with it. Uh, I would rather have a device that costs probably a third or as much and to be able to have that and to be a dedicated video right. recording device with all of the features you're looking for as well. Yeah. So. The simplicity is really what you're looking for. Yeah, your, your, your best bet's probably an HD camcorder. Um, we're assuming something in the consumer enthusiast category since simplicity is key. So, one of the really nice camcorders out there for $1,000, is a Vixia HF-G10. Uh, nice. It's only gonna do 1080 resolution at 60i, not 60p, uh, but it's got a 24p cinema mode and native 24p mode. It basically means the native mode means it's not 23 point yada 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 yada, it's actual 24p mode. Another option is Panasonic's uh, HTC TM900K. Unlike the Canon HF-G10, the TM900 can record 60p at 1080. And if you want something cheaper, as in the first two camcorders we just talked about about thousand dollars for about five hundred bucks. Canon's Vixia HF M four hundred. There's no viewfinder. Low light performance isn't as good as the other two, but seriously, it's half the price, maybe even cheaper online. Also, keep an eye out for uh, its newer sibling, the HF M five hundred, which has an MPEG four record option. Nice. And we should point out, don't get too obsessed with like I really need ten eighty p sixty frames per second because I'm going to have this absolutely amazing video experience. If you're going to be posting this on YouTube or if you're going to be creating a DVD from it, you need really simple video. Yeah. Right? Uh, I mean, even ten eighty p thirty or twenty four is going to be fine for yeah. YouTube. Honestly, for doing HD uploads, you probably want to stick to 12, uh, 1280 by 720, 720p. That's yeah. another good upload for high def. Of course, you know, you've got a camera capable of 1080p 60. I'd want to record on that, but just be aware <laughs> that the only place you're really going to be able to distribute that might be on a Blu-ray disc, yeah. or you're going to have to compress it way down to get it to work on other platforms. So, And if you get a chance, do yourself a favor, get into the wherever the wedding's taking place. If you're like the official camcorder for the official videographer for your friend's oh. weddings, get in there early and figure out whether or not you have any light to work with. Um, because, you know, there's, 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 you could sit at the back and get like the shot <laughs> down the aisle, but there's going to be like two tiny little stick figures at the other end, one in a big poofy dress and one in whatever the dude's wearing. And, uh, it can look really awful. So figure out if it's okay for you to get around the side, get up close, be invasive. Good video usually uh, means irritating the heck yeah. out of everyone involved at the you wedding. You don't want to be practicing on the day of the wedding right. with all this gear. And don't I'll put leave it, it at that. <laughs> it's okay to have a light on top of the camcorder at the reception. Do not blind the bride or the groom. Just saying. No hot spots. Yeah, you don't want to be the most memorable thing about the wedding. Make people look good. <laughs>
<laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. It's time to thank one of our sponsors. Join modding wizard Ben Heck and friends as they build and modify a host of amazing community-inspired creations. In the latest episode, Ben builds a folding briefcase-sized 3D printer that he can take to Maker Faire. Also, don't forget to go to element14.com slash tbhs to find out how you can enter to win Ben's 3D printer, as well as other builds from Ben's show. And remember to watch new episodes of The Ben Heck Show every two weeks right here at revision3.com slash tbhs. <laughs>